must never give up. Don't ever give up. Never give up. Don't ever give up. Never, 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 never. Oh, never, never give up. Welcome to worship at Mount Calvary. We love that you are here with us. Today, our worship leaders are Lisa Dutton, Roxanne Landon, and Pastor Jose Antonio with a cappella group, Bambalela. Thank you to our youth choir director, Sarah Abelson and her crew, Addie Volbrecht, Emery Lang, Autumn Caspers, and Eleanor Abelson. You are invited to outdoor worship on Sundays at 1030. Also Saturday nights, you can chat with other worshipers online during Live at Five. And here's Heidi Bush with our Partner Spotlight. Hi, Mount Calvary. Your Partner Spotlight this week is Many Hands, Many Meals. Many Hands, Many Meals invites you to engage with them this fall on our two upcoming packing events, October 10th and November 13th and 14th. They have modified their packing plan so you will be COVID safe. We hope to see you there. Now, here's a message from the Many Hands, Many Meals board. Hi, my name is Luther Hippie, and I'm a 15-year member of Mount Calvary and a newly elected board member of Many Hands and Many Meals. I'm here in our storage room in the Mount Calvary lower level today. I'm honored to join the other members of the board as we continue the great work that Many Hands, Many Meals is already doing to provide food to our brothers and sisters across the globe. Through your hard work, we packed over 8 million meals to feed people in nine countries and created a way for 30,000 volunteers to serve their neighbors and make an impact. It is a continuous support of the people of Mount Calvary that make many hands such a success. Thank you. We've adapted our process to keep safety first during the pandemic. So please go online today and sign up for our second chance pack, Saturday, October 10th, and the Packathon, Friday and Saturday, November 13th and 14th. I'll see you there. Mark your calendars for our all congregational annual meeting, Sunday, October 25th, 1 p.m. via Zoom. We always need a quorum. This year you can help us from home. And you can be looking good on Zoom with Mount Calvary swag. Listen. We invite you to make a 2021 annual pledge for our general fund. Everything you enjoy at Mount Calvary is provided by special friends and dedicated members who ensure our mission continues. We know families have been affected by the pandemic, so our collective response is more important than ever. So let's rise to the challenge and do our best in meeting our two million budget. Go online to make your 2021 pledge montcalvary.org slash give. Now we begin our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, Mount Calvary. In today's Sunday School song, Deep and Wide, we are reminded of God's big, huge, gigantic love for us. And we're going to do some actions to show how great and big and gigantic it is. The words are deep and and wide, deep and wide. There's a fountain flowing deep and wide. And then we do it all again. Deep and wide, deep and wide. There's a fountain flowing deep and wide. While we're singing, each time we start the song over, we're gonna take a word out and only do the action that goes along with it. So after we sing all the words, then we'll take out the word deep 
and only do the action. Then we sing it again and take out the word wide and only do the action. And then we'll take out the word fountain and only do the action. And we'll try not to make any mistakes. We'll see how it goes. to be back together again. We're going to light our candle. It talks about sacred space. There we go. Let's do that and let's begin our time together in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to ask you in the sacred circle, how you doing today? Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs to the side. I'm kind of thumbs down, thumb to the side. I have a friend who's sick, so I've been kind of keeping an eye on her and saying some prayers. Now, in our story today, there's a couple guys, and they are kind of having a thumbs down, I think kind of life, actually. Because what's happening is this. They can't see. They've been blind. Yeah, so they are sitting, and they are hoping that people will give them food or money. And who should come along on the road but Jesus. And there are people talking and there are people laughing and there are people asking him things. And there is just a lot of noise. And these guys are hearing that it's Jesus. And so they start saying, Jesus, Jesus, over here, over here. Come, come, Jesus, Jesus, over here. And there's some other people and they're like, will you please be quiet? Pretty sure Jesus doesn't have any time for you. Yeah, that's what's going on. And Jesus catches what's going on. He's always paying attention. And he comes over and they're like, Jesus, please help us. And he said, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? And the men said, Jesus, we want to see again. We want to see you. We want to see the birds. We want to see the trees. I, and I can't imagine what it's like not to see. And you know what happened? Jesus said, okay. He said, you now can see. Jesus can do things like that. And sure enough, the two men could see. And so I was thinking about this. How many times do we forget that we can go to Jesus and we can tell him things that are worrying us or ask him things that we need to know? And he is there listening and just waiting for our voices. Next time you're thinking about it, give him a shout out. I'll see you next week. Compassionate God. Compassionate God. Compassionate God. Compassionate God. Compassionate God. We gather today reminded that in all our divisions, we are all created in your image and part of your colorful and crazy family. Help us to find ways to build bridges within our families, our communities, and our world, bringing healing and hope that only come from you. Challenge us to welcome all voices in our conversations and things that hurt and divide us. Give us discerning spirits and humble hearts. 
and cleanse us of toxic emotions and hateful thoughts. Remind us of your unending grace. We are broken, imperfect people. We misunderstand, misbehave, and often miss the whole point. And yet you offer grace and ask us to share that grace with others. Empower us with your wisdom and love so we may learn to choose the path of justice and peace, healing the worlds of our history, trusting that beyond our conflicts there can be reconciliation. Show us how to serve one another, not out of superiority, competence, or strength, but out of humility, vulnerability, and weakness. Not because we have more resources or are more powerful, but because we have no other option. Brick by brick, heart by heart, we will build on until the work is done. And all of your people can make their way safely and abundantly. Amen. The Gospel reading today comes from Matthew chapter 21. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to his tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves, beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is their heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will they do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to the people that produce the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken into pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, grace and peace to you in the name of our Savior, Jesus. Now, I want to warn you, in today's sermon, I don't start happy. But don't worry, I'll get there. Just hang on until the end. Last week, Pastor Dave talked about the profound joy of Jesus and his followers as portrayed in the musical Godspell by John Michael Tebelak. And I was watching clips of Godspell on my computer and I was surprised at my own response. I kind of felt sick. I am someone who feels deep down, deep in my body. And brothers and sisters, my body hurts. My heart hurt to watch the singing and dancing and God spell because that kind of joy, that full body, face shining, eyes sparking, heart beaming joy, just seems so far away. Especially because I know what it feels like to feel that joyful and I haven't felt that way in a while. But I tell you what I do feel like right now. I remember riding in a hay wagon at Bible camp. It was a nice, easy ride with the other campers, and some of them started throwing the hay at one another, and then at me too. And I didn't want the hay thrown at me, so I asked the others to stop. Well, as you might suspect, that just increased their fervor. Stop, 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 I cried. But they threw more and more, and even grinding it in my face with their fists and taking delight in my misery and my tears. And the counselor in charge just laughed along and did nothing despite my cries. I kind of feel like that right now. I imagine many people feel like that right now. Like some folks are delighting in their misery, even grinding their faces in it, while the people who could do something about it stand by and do nothing, laughing, even egging it on, despite their cries for help. Like the world itself, maybe, is 
adding insult to injury. And so I feel sick deep inside and my body hurts. But now let's turn to today's story. I'm not a clevy storyteller myself, and I'm not a word smithing songwriter. I wish I could tell a story as masterfully as Jesus. Watch what he does in today's story, how he forces the powerful to stop and look at themselves and look at the trauma they're causing in God's kingdom. Here's the situation, Jesus says to them. You tell me what should happen. There's a vineyard. It's a good vineyard. A good fence, good security, good investment. Should produce no problem. Just got to go and collect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sounds good. But the tenants of the vineyards, they kill the slaves that the owner sends to get the dividends. Oh, it's terrible. A travesty. No worries. The owner has more slaves, so off they go. Yeah, okay, yep, yep, got to collect. Nope. The tenants kill those slaves too. Outrage! Scandal! Well, the owner needs the produce of the land. Wouldn't you want your money? It's your land. It's your business. Yeah, go and get it. So the owner sends the son. Surely the tenants will respect the son. He can bring back the harvest. Yeah, yeah. But they kill the son too. What are you going to do about it? Kill those tenants. Run them off the land. If they can't harvest the produce, get rid of them and get somebody in there who can. Death is too light a punishment. Torture them first. Serves them right, those ingrates. And with those words, the powerful spring the trap on themselves. <sighs> Snap. Those leaders who have pointed the finger at the offending tenants find their own accusing hand pointing right straight back at themselves. And Jesus lays it out plain. You, O oh powerful, you, O oh leaders, you are the wretched tenants who have produced no harvest and brought forth no fruit. Your positions of responsibility will be taken from you and given to others just as you have spoken. With your own words you have condemned yourselves. For the vineyard is the kingdom of God and you are the tenants and you have selfishly stolen the harvest. Well, those powerful listeners realized Jesus was talking about them and that their own words condemned them and they hated Jesus. They wanted to arrest and kill him. They wanted to twist the law and bend the institutions to get rid of their rival. The only thing that prevented them in that moment was their own self-interest for they feared the retaliation of the crowds who re revered Jesus. Now, I hate looking at myself. The other day after recording a song for worship, I got butterflies in my stomach watching the preview of myself singing. It, it's painful to see our own faults, to own the times we have used our power by the things we have done or the things we have left undone. When we used our power and caused others misery, we don't like thinking that the criticisms about us or the people we like or about the groups we join, we don't like thinking they're true. And so most often, we reject looking at ourselves, just like the leaders did in Jesus' time. Did one of those powerful ones hear Jesus' story and have a change of heart, like the Grinch or Ebenezer Scrooge on Christmas morning? One or two did, perhaps, but not enough to make a difference. They still arrested Jesus. They still mutilated the law and tortured an innocent man. They still nailed his hands and feet to a cross and killed him. And thus it was in the time of Jesus, just as it was in the time of the prophets before him. And so it may be today. Who did the tenants in that story serve? Who did the powerful religious and political leaders serve? Well, they answer with their actions. The tenants kill the slaves and then the son of the landowner to selfishly gain power and money for themselves. The religious and political leaders kill Jesus to selfishly protect their own status and power. God commands first in the Ten Commandments, you shall have no other gods before me. And in teaching this commandment, Martin Luther wrote in the large catechism, that upon which you set your heart and put your trust is your God. Let me say it one more time that upon which you set your heart and put your trust is your God. Luther goes on, He who has money and possessions feels secure and is joyful and undismayed as though he were sitting in the midst of paradise. 
So too, whoever trusts and boasts that he possesses great skill, prudence, power, favor, friendship, and honor, everyone has set up as his own special God wherever he looked for blessings, help, and comfort. Thus, for example, the heathen who put their trust in power and domination. Brothers and sisters, you and I are the tenants of God's kingdom. God has given this earth into our care. And in today's story, Jesus is asking each and every single one of us, who do you really serve? Your political loyalties? Your status? Your comfort? Your security? What is motivating your decisions? Who and what are you thinking about and worrying about? What gets your energy going? Is it God? St. Paul helps us figure it out in Galatians chapter 5. Here's the message translation of that passage. It is obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time. Repetitive, loveless, cheap sex, a stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage, frenzied and joyless grabs for happiness, trinket gods, magic show religion, paranoid loneliness, cutthroat competition, all consuming yet never satisfied wants, a brutal temper, an impotence to love or be loved, divided homes and divided lives, small-minded and lopsided pursuits, the vicious habit of depersonalizing everyone into a rival, uncontrolled and uncontrollable addictions, and ugly parodies of community. These, brothers and sisters, are not of God and God's kingdom. But what is of God and God's kingdom is equally clear. The message translation goes on. What happens when we live God's way? God brings gifts into our lives, much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. Luther also goes on and finishes discussion of the first commandment with this encouragement. But to cling to God with the heart is nothing else than to trust in Him entirely. For this reason, He wishes to turn us away from everything else that exists outside of Him and to draw us to Himself, namely, because He is the only eternal good. And thus, brothers and sisters, we return to the beginning of Jesus' story, the persistent, maybe even foolish landowner, today's image of God. But why is God, as this landowner, so foolish? Well, God keeps trying to get those tenants, namely us, to produce the good fruit. God sends prophet after prophet and servant after servant, slave after slave. Finally, God sends God's own son, Jesus, God's own flesh and blood given to us. Why? Because God rejects our rejections. God refuses our refusals and dismisses our dismissals. We are still God's beloved vineyard and God's beloved vineyard workers, even when we're thick as concrete and crooked as thorns. It makes me think of a Mason Jennings song. It goes, I'm the gentlest hammer. I'm the gentlest hammer. Coming down, down till I break through. I gotta get into you. God loves you. God loves us so much that God will do whatever it takes to break through. Even breaking into death itself to bring us back to life together in God's kingdom. And we can count on that promise from God. Cling to it. And that's what I remembered as I prayed this week. That all the Sunday school songs are true really true. Not just when we're good, but especially when we're wicked and miserable and things are falling apart. I am weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. And you know what, brothers and sisters? 
that makes my heart and body feel a whole lot more joyful. Amen. worship today was written by our Christian ancestors and borrowed by the Apostle Paul to share with the Galatians. As Paul, a Jew, reached out to non-Jews, he laid a foundation for bridging the religious divide, declaring solidarity across ethnic lines, class division, and gender difference. Please join me in confessing our faith in the words of this ancient Christian baptismal creed. For in Christ Jesus, we are all children of God through faith. As many of us were baptized into Christ, have clothed ourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. All of us are one in Christ. Let us continue with the prayers of the people. 
Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you are our refuge in what feels like a very uncertain time. Help us see that your beloved Son, Jesus, is the cornerstone no matter what. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us expand our ability to be compassionate, to ride the ups and downs of life with those close to us, and to reach out to strangers, even if it's just a mask muffled hello or a hand raised in greeting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Father, hear us when we pray, whether it's in meditation, in the written word, in reading scripture, in motion, or in song. Teach us to use quiet moments to deepen our connection with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, help us to see those who feel rejected as cornerstones rather than as stones to throw away or crush, and to, cre and to create and support communities of faith wherever we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with someone today. Let us join together in a brief order for confession and forgiveness. God of compassion and mercy, we bring to you our divided society and our broken world. Seeking your healing and transforming grace, it is easy for us to point the finger at others, yet we know that we all need your forgiveness. Break down the walls of hatred, distrust, and bitterness, and open a way for us to reach one another in truth and love. Enable us to build a society where all can belong, to share our gifts and mutual respect, and to seek the new future which you offer us. Through Jesus Christ, amen. The God of mercy and grace forgives us that we may forgive one another, heals us that we may be people of healing, and renews us that we may also be makers of peace. Amen. It was a night with Jesus that the disciples would always remember, and because they did, we do as well. The night before he was to die on a cross, they shared a meal. Before the meal, Jesus bent down and washed their feet, all of them, the one who betrayed him, the one who denied knowing him, the two who argued about which of them was the greatest, the one who doubted, all of them. And then Jesus took a loaf of bread. And I invite you to do so now with whatever bread you have. And Jesus gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to all of them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now please take a hold of your wine. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This is the blood of the new covenant shed for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. So as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we remember and we trust that Jesus is fully present and in communion with us through the sharing of this bread and wine. Gifts of grace, bread for the journey, uniting God's people in every time and place. And now we pray together as God's people in a way Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the body and blood of Christ strengthen and keep us in his grace. Amen. Now receive the blessing. The way is long. Let us go together. The way is difficult. Let us help each other. 
The way is joyful, let us share it. The way is Christ, let us follow. Amen. Bambalela, Bambalela, oh, Bambalela, Bambalela, Bamba, 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 oh, Bamba, Bambalela. Bambalela, Bambalela, oh, Bambalela, Bambalela. Bamba 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 oh bamba bamba lela bamba lela bamba lela oh bamba lela bamba lela bamba 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 oh bamba bamba lela si zo bamba lela Bamba, 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 bamba. 